friends. Welcome to story time. How are you doing today? Are you having a good day? All right. Well, my name is Miss Lisa and I get to do the story times at Worthington Park. And today we're going to be talking about, hmm, what do you think we might be talking about today? We're going to be talking about animals, but not the animals you might see at your house or in your neighborhood. We're going to be talking about animals that you might see in the wild. So you might have to see them at the zoo. If they're ones that we have at our zoo, you might have to travel to see them. <laughs> they're so subtle, aren't they? <laughs> All right. So you might have to travel to see some of these animals, but we're gonna be talking a lot about animals that live in the jungle and animals that might live in the savanna today. All right. Ooh, ooh. Good job. You got them all in. I'm going to read my story now. Okay, so we're going to talk about, do you have a favorite animal? I wondered. Yeah, we have lots of favorite animals at our house. All right, I'm going to read one story, and then we might have a couple guests come back. Are you ready? Okay, this one is called The Big Five, and it's written by Bella Macatini and illustrated by Judy Abbott. You might remember we read this one during our family week. Ready? Danny is staying with his grandpa for five days. He loves to look at grandpa's beautiful paintings and colorful masks. His favorite is a painting of five animals from Africa. Those are the big five, said grandpa, the most famous animals from my homeland. Why don't I tell you about one animal each day? Do you remember how many days he was going to stay there? Five. That worked out really well. Hey, how many fingers do you have? Do you have five fingers on one hand? One, two, three, four, five. All right, ready? Danny, oh, I already read that page. On Monday, Danny and Grandpa walk to the supermarket. It is raining, so Danny wears his raincoats and boots. What is the first animal, Danny asked Grandpa. The first animal is so big that you can see him from a great distance, says Grandpa. He has big ears, big tusks, and a long trunk. I heard a guess from my not-so-quiet audience. <gasps> I know which animal that is, calls Danny. That's the elephant! Very good, says Grandpa. And you know what an elephant is good at? Stomping! I can do that too, says Danny. And he stomps with his puddle, boots in a puddle. Grandpa stomps with him. Can you stomp? Can you do some stomping? Not here. <laughs> do some stomping there. Good job. On Tuesday, Danny and Grandpa are making crafts. Danny uses two toilet paper rolls to make binoculars. Ooh, you could do that too. What is the second animal, he asked. The second animal roar so loud that you can hear him from a distance. He has a long mane, sharp teeth, and dangerous claws. Ooh, what do you think that is? Do you have any guesses? <gasps> Was that what you thought? It's a lion. Very good, said Grandpa. Do you know what a lion is good at? Jumping. Oh, I can do that too, says Danny. He jumps as far as he can. Grandpa jumps with him. On Wednesday, Danny and Grandpa enjoy a picnic in the park. There are three slices of cucumber left on Danny's plate. What is the third animal, he asks. Remember, we're on one, two, three, third animal. The third animal has thick skin and two horns on its nose says Grandpa. Yeah. Thick skin and yeah. two horns on his nose. Right on. Oh, that might be it. <gasps> Danny thinks hard. <gasps> That's the rhino. Very good, says Grandpa. Do you know what a rhino is good at? Grazing. I can do that too, says Danny, and he puts a slice of cucumber in his mouth. Grandpa takes one too. Do you know what grazing is? That might not be a word you know. Oh, it means eating. Eating. Yep. <laughs> On Thursday, Danny and Grandpa go 
for a bike ride to the playground. Danny sits on the back of the bike. What is the fourth animal? He asks. The fourth animal looks like a big cat, says Grandpa. It has soft fur and is covered in spots. Mm. Leopard? Cheetah. Danny thinks, that's the leopard. Very good, says Grandpa. Yes. Do you know what a leopard is good at? Climbing. I could do that too, says Danny. Danny climbs to the top of the slide. Grandpa waits for him at the bottom. Friday is Danny's last day with Grandpa. Danny plays with some friends in the yard. What's the fifth animal? He asks. The fifth animal has two crooked horns above his ears and likes to be with his friends. Cow. It's a cow. I know. Uh, moose? This one's tricky. This might not be an animal you know. Danny isn't sure what Grandpa means. Right his now. friends don't know either. That's the buffalo, B buffalo, says Grandpa. And you know what a buffalo is also good at? Running! Oh, we could do that too, says Danny. Danny runs across the yard. His friends run too. Are you good at running? I bet you are. That night, Grandpa has a surprise. He takes the painting of the big five from the wall and gives it to Danny. You may take this painting home with you, and when you're older, we'll visit the land where I come from together. Wow, says Danny. Thank you, Grandpa. I can't wait. Look at that. Those are some pretty exciting animals to go visit. I haven't gotten to see the land where those animals are wild. No, but that would be a pretty exciting trip. Now we're going to do a song and we're going to just do the first little bit of it. And if you like it and you want to do the rest of it, you can do it on YouTube. It's from Lori Berkner and it's one that we like to do in story time. But I like to do it with my whiteboard. So normally we have my big smart board and I have a whole thing for it. But it is called Waiting for the Elevator. And we're going to do it a little bit, oh, a little bit differently today than we normally do it. It's like a whack-a-mole game. All right, are you ready? I'm going to push a button and wait. Stop, Will. Ready? Waiting for the elevator. Might come sooner, might come later. When it does, I'll step inside and go for a ride. Push the button. What's the first floor gonna be? One. Going to the first floor, one. Going to the first floor, up, up, up. And when it opens up the door. Come on. There's a dog. What? saying, wag your tail with me. Now we're waiting for the elevator. <laughs> might come sooner, might come later. <laughs> when it does, I'll step inside and go for a ride. Press the button. Two, going to the second floor, two. <laughs> Going to the second floor, up, 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 and when it opens up the door. You'll never guess. <laughs> There's a cat. You didn't say your line. There's a cat <laughs> saying, come and jump with me. Are you going to jump? <laughs> now we're waiting for the elevator. <laughs> might come sooner, or might come later. When it does, we'll step inside and go for a ride. Press the button. All right, we're done with that. So there's a fun surprise that happens as you go up in the elevator with that song. The Lori Berkner video is really cute. It's from the Lori Berkner band, um, and it is on YouTube. Yeah. Readily available for your next dance party. All right. You guys on out of here. I'm going to read the next story. We don't have a very subtle cat. No, no, not subtle animals at all at our house. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> nope, that's enough. Okay, upstairs or outside? Cat. All right, we're going to play in, or we're going to read another story. Whew, that was something, wasn't it? Okay, I don't know where my kids get all their shyness from. 
Now we are going to read another story called Still a Gorilla. And this is by Kim Norman, and it's illustrated by Chad Giron. Lily, you need to go upstairs or outside. And it's from Orchid Books in New York. Orchard Books, I'm sorry. Ready? This is Willie. As you can see, Willie is a gorilla. Where does Willie live? What does that look like? I think he might live at a zoo. <gasps> Willie would like to be something else. Maybe a lion. If Willie strides outside and roars with pride, will Willie be a lion? Will he? No, still a gorilla. He has a leaf mane. Yeah, he made himself a leaf mane. What about a walrus? If Willie's teeth grew wrong, a foot too long, will Willie be a walrus? Will he? What will he be? No, still a gorilla. What did he make his walrus tusks out of? He put bananas in there. How about a billy goat? If Willie chews on crates or had butt skates, will Willie be a billy goat? Will he? Mm. No, still a gorilla. Probably a gorilla with a little bit of a headache now, huh? Perhaps an alligator. If Willie creeps and chomps in slimy swamps, will Willie be an alligator? Will he? What do you think? Will he be an alligator then? No. No. Still a gorilla. I don't think I'd want to be a gorilla that close to that many alligators. What do you think? They will bite him. They might. Maybe a kangaroo. If Willie thumps and jumps over a plum tree jumps, will Willie, will Willie be a kangaroo? Will he? He won't be a kangaroo? <gasps> no. Still a gorilla. Well, how about this? What if Willie roars and grows, chews and butts, creeps and chomps, and thumps and jumps all at the same time? Will Willie be silly? Yes, Willie will be silly. Very silly. And still a gorilla. He's a silly gorilla, though, isn't he? I love that one. All right, let's do one. Uh, let's do our next book that's a song. Do you know Row, Row, Row Your Boat? I love Jane Cabrera does a lot of stories where she takes a story you already know, a song you already know, and she makes it more interesting. Hold on, baby. Hold on. All right, ready? It's from Holiday House. Ready? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Now they're going to see some animals and the words are going to change a little bit. But if you know it, you can sing with me. Row, row, row your boat slowly down the creek. If you see the swimming mice, don't forget to squeak. Can you squeak? Eek! Row, row, row your boat, splish and splash and splatter. If you see the monkey swing, don't forget to chatter. Can you do a monkey noise? <laughs> it's one of my good ones. Row, row, row your boat past the old tree stump. If you see, what is that? The oh. elephant. Don't forget to trump. Can you make an elephant noise? I'm not good at elephant noise. <gasps> oh, that was so good. Glad my audience is here. Row, row, row your boat through the narrow gap. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to snap. Row, row, row your boat closer to the shore. If you see a lion smile, don't forget to roar. Roar! Good job. Row, row, row your boat. Watch the tiger prowl. If you see his mighty pounce, don't forget to growl. Can you growl? Roar! Good job. Row, row, row your boat beneath the sky so blue. If you see the singing doves, don't forget to coo. Coo, 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 coo. You know what I see happening? It's starting to get 
later at night, don't you think? Row, row, row your boat. Now it's getting dark. If you see mommy dog, don't forget to bark. Can you bark? Woof, woof. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Wearily, 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 wearily. Snuggle up and dream. Good job. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about an idea called opposites. Do you know what opposites are? Opposites are two words that mean very different things. So, opposites in my house are sometimes my kids are really, really loud. They are. And sometimes my kids are really, really quiet. Actually, they're never quiet. Nope. Except sometimes my kids are asleep. And the opposite of asleep would be awake. All right, we're going to try some of these. Ready? This one is called Quiet Koala, Noisy Monkey, A Book of Jungle Opposites. Hello, zebra. Your stripes are black and white. Hello there, parrot. Your feathers are multicolored. Hello, elephants and frogs. You two are both totally dry. What would the opposite of dry be? Oh, but look at that. Now you are getting all wet. Hello, koala. You are sleepy and quiet on your branch. Hi, monkey. You are active and noisy. Go ahead and jump around, lion. It's daytime. And now it's nighttime. Have a good sleep. Hi, crocodile. Are you sitting there alone? Oh, here are your friends. Now you are playing together. Giraffe, your neck is so short. Now, where is the rest of your body? Snake? Hmm. Ah, oh, now I see. I knew they were both long. Good job. So short and long, alone and together, quiet and noisy, daytime and nighttime. Those are all opposites. All right. You did such a wonderful job with our story time today. I have a few ideas I thought you might like doing at home. First of all, there are so many books about jungle animals. You can find a bunch of them at the library, I am sure. And I bet you can even find some in your house. You probably have some. All right, I was also thinking it might be fun if you could make some wild animals out of things you find around your house. So let's see what you can come up with. I'm very excited to see these. And then I also thought it might be fun to do a playground or a Play-Doh zoo where you can use Play-Doh and popsicle sticks to make your animals and your zoo surroundings. So your habitats for the animals. I thought it might be fun if you want to try a new guessing game at your house. You can do different yoga poses for different animals and see if you can figure out who it, what you're being. And then you can have a fun dance party with animal music. All right, that's what I have today, friends. I'll talk to you later. Bye.